Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel I'm going to show you how I designed and printed this coaster using nothing but Prusa Slicer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, behold the drink coaster. For as long as there has been a need for a barrier between fine home furnishings and blistering hot coffee mugs or icy beverages breaking out in a cold sweat, the humble drink coaster has been a round. And sometimes it has been a square. But regardless of its shape, it provides essential services, protecting, essentially, surfaces of whatever you want to put that drink on, no matter whether that drink is hot or cold. And today, I want to show you how you can design a coaster like this, or this, or this, using only Prusa Slicer, instead of using 3D modeling or 3D design software. So this is the first one I made. It is a 100 millimeter diameter circle, 5 millimeters tall, with a grid pattern to support your beverage. But I couldn't decide if I liked it or not. I waffled for a bit, and then I decided, oh, what the hex? So I made one with a honeycomb pattern. But not content to let that be, I remembered that Huey Lewis once said, it's hip to be square, which was all over the news at the time. So I made this 100 millimeters on a side and still only five millimeters tall. And all of these came out really well. I printed them in a yellow Soval brand TPU partly for the challenge of printing TPU, and partly because I wanted to protect the furniture that I placed them on. And I printed them on a mostly stock Ender 3. It still has the stock Creality hot end, and it's still a boat and drive system, but I did upgrade the extruder. Now the extruder on this printer is a Bontech clone thing that I got on Amazon a while back. I installed it when I was running into problems after printing PETG for days, and I started having hot end clogs, and so in desperation, I bolted this thing on with the intention of moving PETG through the hot end with sheer brute force. And I learned something when I did that. These BMG things with their dual filament drive gears and three to one gear ratios can push so hard on the filament that it actually pushed the Bowden tube off the end of itself when the filament got stuck in the hot end yet again. Now it turns out that the reason for all the jams and stuff had nothing to do with the stock extruder not pushing filament hard enough. I mean, clearly if an upgraded extruder can push the filament so hard that it pops the Bowden tube out of itself, there's something else going on. And that something else was the crispy, crunchy, constricted end of the Bowden tube down in the hot end, and it got that way because of the higher temperatures I was using to print all that PETG. So in the end, the fix was simply replacing the Bowden tube. But I left the upgraded extruder on the printer. Now anyway, even though the extruder on that particular Ender 3 is upgraded, I was able to successfully print TPU on my fully stock Ender 3 Pro back when it was fully stock. So don't think you can't do this on a stock machine. My secret to printing TPU on a Bowden drive system will be revealed in just a bit. Now first I want to show you how you can make coasters like these in Prusa Slicer. And it is literally the only software that I'm using. These awesome coasters weren't made in a 3D modeling application. These were made 100% in Prusa Slicer. So let's jump over to the computer and get into Prusa Slicer and start coastering. So I want to make another square coaster. And here's how to do that. Now remember, we're only using the tools available in Prusa Slicer. We're not using any 3D modeling software to make these coasters. So first, we need a square shape. Well, I call it a square, but a square is two-dimensional. This is really more of a box, right? I mean, sure, it's a really, really flat box, but it's still a box. Now, out here on the plater, where you would normally drag in an STL file or arrange parts for printing, there is a secret hiding. And the secret is, when there is nothing on the plater, right-clicking on the plater's surface will bring up a menu, and it has a single item, Add Shape. And the Add Shape menu item has three sub-items box, cylinder, and sphere. I'm going to pick box, and what I get is a 22 millimeter cube. And that, well, that doesn't make for a very good coaster. Ah, but look over here. We can control the size of it. Now, right now, these are locked. Now, that doesn't mean that they're locked and you can't change them. It means the scaling is locked 
to maintain proportions. So if I were to change the X value from 22 millimeters to 100 millimeters, the Y and Z values change to match it, like so. Now I have a 100 millimeter cube. Now this also doesn't make for a very good coaster. It needs to be about 95% shorter. And what I mean by that is I want it to be five millimeters tall. So I'll click the lock icon and now it's unlocked. That means I can change the size of one axis without affecting the others. So I'll set Z to five millimeters. Perfect, now that's a coaster. But it's rather frumpy, not fantastic, fun, or fancy, but we can fix it fast. No, I have no idea what was behind that sudden burst of alliteration. Now I know this coaster doesn't look like much now, but that will change soon. The magic happens here in the print settings tab. What I've done is saved a copy of my regular 0.2 millimeter print settings for TPU and included the word coaster at the end. Now this way I can keep these settings separate from my regular ones and I don't have to remember all the things that I need to change from the regular settings to get one of these cool coasters. First up, speed. Now because I'm printing these in TPU on an Ender 3, which has a Bowden feed system to get filament to the hot end, I am printing slowly. That is my path to success when printing flexible filament on an Ender 3. Slow and steady. It may not win the race, but usually it can at least cross the finish line. So my print speeds are 15 millimeters per second for the first layer and 20 millimeters per second for everything else. Again, yes, it's slow, but it also gets results. Next, in layers and perimeters, I'm using a 0.2 millimeter layer height, six perimeters, zero top layers, and four bottom layers. Over in advanced, I have the default extrusion width set to 0.6 millimeters, and I've set all the other extrusion widths to zero. Using a zero value tells Prusa Slicer to use the default extrusion width instead. So if I want to change the width across the board for this setting, I only have to change the default value. So a minute ago I said the magic happens in the Print Settings tab, and specifically, it happens in Infill. Back in Layers and Perimeters, I set it to have zero top layers, so that means that all these wonderful patterns inside the coasters are actually exposed infill. So you can make several unique coaster designs simply by varying the infill pattern and percentages. So that square coaster that I showed you at the beginning of the video, that was made using the concentric infill pattern at 15%. Now I'll show you what that looks like over in the Plater tab. I'll click Slice Now and behold, a square coaster. The six perimeters provide a nice thick border around the edges and the concentric squares make for an awesome pattern. But you've already seen this one printed out. Let's go back to print settings and pick another infill pattern. So grid you saw on one of the round coasters. Honeycomb too. I want to see what this Hilbert curve looks like. Now that's a pattern that I've never used before. So back to the Plater and let's slice it and Whoa, that's freaking cool. I'm gonna print that one. Now, Prusa Slicer says it'll take two and a half hours and Prusa Slicer is freakishly accurate on its time estimates. So off that goes to the printer. Sorry though, no time lapses. This is a flat print and time lapses of flat prints are boring. So I'll just sit here and wait a bit and... Oh, is it done already? Time sure does fly. Well, uh, here's the finished coaster. What do you think? I think it came out amazing. I want to do another one with a different infill pattern. Let's set it to octogram spiral and slice and whoa, that one's beautiful. Why are all these infill patterns so awesome? It seems like a waste to hide them inside a print. Okay, I'm printing that one out too. And done. Wow, these are all super cool. And remember, you can make circular ones too. On a blank plater, add a cylinder instead of a box and set its X and Y size to 100 millimeters and its Z size to five millimeters, and then experiment with different infill patterns and percentages. So that's how you can make some really beautiful coaster designs without having to use any 3D modeling software. This was all done 100% in the 100% free Prusa Slicer. It's awesome, it's free, it works just fine with non-Prusa printers. I've got a video about setting it up for an Ender 3 from scratch, but after I made that video, Prusa started including Ender 3 printer profiles, and from what I hear, those are a good starting point. So if you're not using Prusa Slicer and you'd like to give it a try, there's a link in the description where you can go download it and then you can get started playing around with it. 
Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's take some time to go visit the coast or, and then go print something cool. And then we can set our drinks down on top of it. Oh, hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of these super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. Don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in the video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at too. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.